Robert Moses is one of the most racist human beings I've ever encountered. He didn't want poor people, but in particular, he didn't want blacks to be able to use his Long Island beaches, including Jones Beach. Jones Beach opened in 1929. So this is 40 years later. Ina and I went to Jones Beach. There's several parking lots, but there's a main parking lot that holds, I think, 10,000 cars. And there's an underpass with four entrances that people all have to funnel through from their car to get to the beach. Ina and I stood on the beach side of the underpass, and we each with a, ha a pad in our hand and three columns. This is the column that indicates how many white people came to Jones Beach. This is the column that indicates how many black people. And this is the column that indicates how many Latinos. I wanted to see his racist policies, what effect they had had on Jones Beach. The effect is here. It was just sort of a terrible moment, you know, because it's one thing to know intellectually that he did these things. But to see it with your own eyes, I could hardly believe. You know, this is just the first page. There are more pages because there were so many white people coming through that you couldn't get it all on one page. You ran out and you had to go to the next page. And there's a reason that you have this incredible racial, horrible disparity. In those days, poor people didn't have cars, largely. So they could get to Jones Beach one of two ways. He had stopped them from coming by railroad because the Long Island Railroad wanted to build a spur to Jones Beach. He prevented that easily. But he built the parkways, and he was afraid people would come out on buses. So what he did, he built bridges. The exact numbers in the power book, I think he built 178 bridges you need a 14-foot clearance for a, for a bus to go through. He built his bridges on the Southern State, the Northern State, the Meadowbrook, the Wantour, and the other Long Island parkways too low for buses to come. He had passed legislation banning buses from the parkway, but I remember his chief aide, a guy named Sidney M. Shapiro, saying to me, well, you know, legislation can always be changed. It's very hard to change a bridge once it's up. The commissioner, he always called Robert Moses the commissioner, the commissioner had wonderful foresight. He had done other things, which I mean, he didn't have any black lifeguards except at one distant, the westernmost distant part of Jones Beach, he had black lifeguards. And black people explained to me that was like a signal. That was the beach that they were welcome at. But hardly any blacks came. Standing that, that day made me more and more determined to show the effect that racism and Robert Moses' racism had had on the history of New York. And you really say the impact, the racial impact of what he did with methods like this, which lasted, made New York such a segregated people, but deprived people of color of the right they had to use the ocean to enjoy the beach. And it's like showing how Robert Moses cemented with his bridges, if he cemented racism into his park system and how it was still working 40 years later. <laughs>